I'm Tracy Hightower, and I'm the program manager for Valley Gives. And so when I get an email, a phone call, it's usually from me. Uh, and feel free to call me and email me anytime you have a question, concern, issue, any of those things. I'm ready to work for you guys. Uh, so welcome to Valley Gives. Uh, some of you are here because you've never participated before as an organization, and some of you are here because you are new to being the administrator for your organization. So it's really great that you took the time to do this. Um, we wanted to initially thank the people who are helping us out today. Uh, we have Northampton Community Television, who's videotaping this for us. So if you miss anything, <coughs> you can call me. <laughs> or email me and I'll send you a copy of this as soon as I have it. And um, also the Pioneer Valley Hospitality Group. They are the Hamden Inns, this, many other you know, hotel chains in this area belong to, the, to this organization and they were gracious enough to let us use this room today which is a really fantastic room, <laughs> I think. <laughs> so we wanna thank them for having us. Um, we are, yes, the Community Foundation of Western Massachusetts. We put this program on, but we have many partners in the production of this campaign. And so all of these organizations are affiliated with us as partners, and they meet with us regularly, help us promote the program, and give us general support in whatever we do. So you may be familiar with a few of them. And so the first thing I want to go into is like a community giving day. Um, a few years ago, there were just maybe a couple dozen giving days happening in the United States. Razoo itself does 60 giving days. So this year, they're doing about 40. Last year, they did about 30. They keep building up. They've done 60 total. And they've raised $120 million inside those giving days. It's a really productive very good, say, uh, ener uh, what, energy efficient <laughs> way of raising money. Um, so if you look at some of the points of why we do this, you'll understand why. There are public awareness campaigns, most importantly. A lot of people are shifting to giving online and it's easy to advertise online. It's easy to get your word out online. And giving days uh, really encourage local activity. So even though we're doing this online, we're accessing people in our own community who really want to give back. So that's really important thing about this whole program. It's teaching you how to access those people in your local community to give to things they really, really love. Um, and the other reason we do it is because there are a lot of prizes involved. <laughs> and so most of the organizations that pr put these programs on, they raise a lot of money to give away. And some of that money is to incentivize participants to come and join us, but it's also to incentivize donors to give, because a lot of the prizes are affiliated with the donation they give on that day. We'll learn more about that soon. So, in a nutshell, Giving Days impacts, they build a broad engagement with e-philanthropic community, so anybody who wants to give online in our community revs them up, and it strengthens your nonprofit capacity, and that's through the trainings that we provide. So we are going to be teaching you about social media. We'll be teaching you about how to ask, how to tell your story, and how to follow up with your donors. And all of that is building the capacity for you to reach out to your donors, get new donors, build your databases. And all of that equals money <laughs> for your good work. Um, so we have some goals this year. They're um, pretty simple goals. Uh, the first year we had 260 non, or 264 nonprofits who participated. Last year we had 351. We'd like to see 400 nonprofit organizations joining us for Valley Gives. We are at 255 as of today, and we have another, what, almost? Three months. We have two months of, of registration still, so, so yes, two more months. <laughs> and also providing your capacity building tools. So we'll talk about that more, the, so, the, the solicitation, the storytelling, the social media and stewardship. And we are also really revving this campaign up uh, to reach out to more donors. The first year we had 6,500 donors come to our site on the day of. 
Last year, we had 11,500 donors show up on the day of. This year, we're taking a big leap, and we're saying we're going to have 20,000 donors show up and give on that day. Not a big leap, a little leap. So that's the first part of Valley Gives. Michael Kusek is our marketing campaign manager, I guess we could say. He's, he's the one that gets the word out there to the donors and to y'all. And um, he's going to tell you a little bit more about statistics of giving days. Good afternoon. So that's the day. So welcome aboard. Um, welcome aboard doing Valley Gives to everybody. Um, I've been doing Valley Gives since it started. I was the first program manager, which Tracy picked up and we had Marcy last year, and Tracy's got it this year. So um, um, it's been a real great opportunity to work with hundreds of really talented nonprofit professionals all over the valley. Everybody here is really amazing. That's the date you're going to have to put in your calendar today, because that day you're going to be very, very, very busy. So um, I wanted to talk just a little bit about when we talk about capacity building and recognizing what's happening with um, online giving versus traditional forms of philanthropy in the country, um, we really wanted to hit home about how important it is for you to get in the game of doing online giving. So last year, um, in 2013, online giving was up 13.5%. Overall giving was only up 4.9%. And now online giving accounts for 6.4% of all giving. So if you're not in a position to accept gifts online, or if you're not soliciting donations from your, your community, if you're not in that position, you're losing almost 10%. And that's increasing every year. Last year, um, online giving was up 10%. And it accounted for about the same percentage, just a little bit more um, in terms of overall giving. But each year, this number is going to be going up. So each year you ignore doing online philanthropy means you're going to be turning away donors to your organization. Here's a list of different categories of nonprofits. Um, find your nonprofit here or roughly in one of these broad categories. But you can see this is the percentage of total fundraising that each kind of these organizations, each different type of organization is getting, where they're getting their money from. Across the board, all of them are up in their percentage. So across the board, nonprofits are seeing these numbers jump. Um, when we started um, planning uh, the original Valley Gives, what we did was we looked to all of the other giving days that are in the United States so we could steal the best ideas and create Valley Gives with, which some people call best practices, but it's <laughs> stealing all the best ideas. Um, and one of, the, one, of the, um, one of the give days that we looked at that we were particularly impressed with, not only their organization and how they engaged their community and how they really promoted philanthropy, was um, Seattle. And their, their giving day is called Give Big. It's by the Seattle Foundation. And this just gives you an indication as to what their growth was over four years. And the big jumps are from year one to year two. And that's what we saw here in the Valley. The big jump was because all of a sudden, the nonprofits got it, the community got it, and the gears all sort of engaged and all moved in the same direction. And you can see, you'll see in year three, which we're moving into here, they saw another big jump. By year four, they're starting to look a little bit more institutionalized. More nonprofits are participating, but they're starting to you know, hit kind of a cap with the amount of money that they've raised. There are a few other um, organizations. These are lots of numbers on a slide, and I, I apologize for that. Um, but we wanted to just give you a snapshot of where Valley Gives stands in terms of other giving days around the country. Um, give MN, get this act, there's an M and an N there, but it doesn't show up. Um, that's Give Minnesota. That was the original. That's the, that's the grandmother of all giving days. Because like all good ideas, everything comes from Minnesota. So, um, but what they do is they have a statewide giving day. 
And when the recession hit in 2008, the nonprofit community got together there and said, what can we do to protect and insulate the fundraising for our nonprofits across the state? And they created the Giving Day, and it was a wild success. And they now raise in excess of $18 million statewide in 24 hours. Um, Spring into Action. Spring to Action is Alexandria, Virginia. Um, again, that's just a city-based giving day. Um, this year, they raised just over a million with just under 100 nonprofits and about 7,500 donors. Uh, Lincoln, Nebraska is moving into their fourth year. They're roughly about the same size as us. And they raised just over two last year. They're going to be doing their third giving day soon. Nevada's Big Give. Now, this is the whole state of Nevada. Raised just under a half a million dollars. Remember, in the Valley, we raised two million. So it shows like what the potential here is in the Pioneer Valley for raising money. Um, and then Live Give PC is Park City, Utah. Um, and again, just a sort of small regional city non, um, giving day uh, with 75 nonprofits raising just under a million dollars. We're weird, but we all live in the valley and should anybody be surprised by that? It shouldn't be that shocking. But we're really one of the only giving days in the United States that's regional. Um, we're Hamden, Hampshire, and Franklin counties. People tell us we all play together well. This is one of those chances where we get to all play together well. They're, most giving days are either a city or a state. And we're, we're the oddball. We're a region. And we do quite well. So I just wanted to give you a little bit of a background on what giving days look like. Oh, and here's Valley Gives. So if, if you, you, since you are new, if you haven't been following incredibly closely, this shows you a little bit about the growth um, of Valley Gives um, going from 1.1 1, 1 .1 million to just over two between years one and two, and really almost doubling the number of, number of donors. Michael did a great job last year. If you didn't see the billboards on Interstate 91 or you know the signs in the middle of Northampton, <laughs> then you missed it. But he has been doing a fantastic job of getting Valley Gives out there. So. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about the elements of a giving day. I wanted to start with one thing, though. A lot of you have signed up for this session, and you're going to be going into the next session, which is the full whammy. It's like an hour and a half, chock full of great information. Some of this will be repeated, so if you miss any of it. Um, the requirements for new participating organizations are to come to this training or view it. I'm going to have to send it to a few. <laughs> And, or, and go to a full Valley Gives presentation. And there are two happening here today in Hampshire County. We have two next um, on the 16th in Springfield, and we have one up in Greenfield. So we've kind of put it in every place so everybody can get to them. So if you didn't sign up for the, one of the sessions after this one today, please make sure you get to one of those because you'll learn a lot, lot more uh, that will be very, very helpful. Uh, and then the other requirement is that you go to a webinar or our live storytelling training. You only have to go to one of them, but we encourage you to go to all of them. So some of them you can watch on your computer at home, uh, some of them, and the, and the storytelling is live, and that's because the storytelling program is based on really giving you know, your story out there to other people, sharing it, honing it, so on and so forth. And, and uh, Northampton Community Television is going to be there helping us with that one as well. So it's going to be a good program. So key elements of Giving Day. We have technology platform. This is how we get our money filtered from your donors to us. This is where you build your web page. I'll tell you more about that. Competitive incentive grants, our prize money. Nonprofit outreach, me <laughs> and you. You guys putting it out there to your, your, your board members, your volunteers, your donors. That's the outreach. Uh, capacity building, learning how to uh, get the word out there. Facebook, Twitter, your database, mailings, emailings, newsletters. Uh, you can do that traditional mailing or traditional media, which I just talked about, and social media, which I just talked about. So we're going to go through these really quickly. But again, when you come to the next training, we're going to go really deep into them. 
So technology platform. So if you're here, you have registered with Razoo. And Razoo is a giving day expert. So what they do for you is they help you build a web page. They help you find, build the vessel for people to throw money into, so to speak. Um, and they are very, very successful at what they do. And I hope you guys have found that if you've had any issues, that they have been very helpful because they always seem to respond to me very quickly. This is your team. These are the people you're on the phone with. <laughs> They're very fun, very goofy people. They're located in DC. If you need any help from them, they're support at razoo.com. Spelled Razoo wrong. <laughs> I spelled Razoo wrong. And then the phone number. So that's R-A-Z-O-O.com and their 800 number. So first thing we're going to talk about is the nonprofit toolkit. OK, so this is part of the technology platform. This is the website, and you guys have probably have seen it. The nonprofit toolkit is your best friend in this. Everything you could possibly need to know is there. But again, feel free to call me. And the, the building your website, this is, your, uh, this is one of the, the most important things that you're going to do. So in step two, there's a link, how to videos. The most easy way to learn how to build your Razoo website and get really great information off of that website once the day is done. <clears throat> So the how-to videos has its own page. If you click on that link, it'll take you here. I'll go back to that. So this is how to edit your nonprofit page and make it awesome. So this will teach you how to put up photographs, put up your text, create thank you notes to people who donate, um, create a matching grant, <coughs> really important. This will go into more detail, but creating a matching grant is a really important thing to do, if you're, especially if you're a smaller organization. Promote your Razoo fundraising page. So how do you get yourself linked on your Facebook page? How do you get it linked on your Twitter page? How do you put it into your newsletter? All of those things. Can you also put it on your website? Yep. Customize the thank you message. So this is once your donor is given, this is the message you're going to see. They don't get a thank you from Razoo. They get a thank you from you. And just so you don't, if you don't understand, Rezu is a foundation. All your donors are giving to a foundation. That foundation is then writing you one check, but it's giving you a list of all your donors. Okay, so there's a place that shows you how to get the list of your donors once the giving day is over. You can actually do it today if you want. You can go and look and see. But basically, it collects the name of your donors, their addresses, their email addresses, their phone numbers, and all of that information you can download and use to build your donor database. You have to remember, these people can donate anonymously, or they can put their information in, and they know this. They're told this when they donate. They want you to have this information. They want you to use it. They're giving to you. They want to hear from you. They want to hear what you're doing. They want to hear what's going on in your organization. They gave to you for a reason. They want to know where their money went to. OK, so prizes and rules. This is a really fun part. This is where you guys get to earn some money. So we have raised $225,000. The Community Foundation, their philanthropic service department, has gone out and raised $225,000 for you guys, just to give to you, because you're great. And all the prizes, they're all donated through the Community Foundation. So that $225,000 $1, will be coming as checks to you if you win a prize from the Community Foundation. You should see it literally within a couple of weeks of your giving day. And then anything you donate to uh, Razoo or is donated to Razoo for your organization will come in a check within a month of when the giving day is. So I talked about matching grants really quickly. I'm going to go through this fast again, but we are going to again expand on this when we get into um, into the next uh, uh, session. But basically, we have, we're giving away $2,500 $2, uh, matching grants to organizations that get a matching grant of $2,500 or more. Did anybody, did no one understand that? Or is someone under not, did anybody get that? So at the end of the day, we're gonna pick 25 organizations that reach their matching grants. So somebody, from your organization might want to donate $2,500. You then say, 
hey, we can get $2,500 if you give to us. They can, they can, uh, you'll see it on your web page, you'll see it on your donation page. There's a, an insignia called a medallion, and that medallion will show up if there's a match on your page. When your donor puts up that $2,500, as soon as it's matched, they will get an email and say, hey, we reached our goal of $2,500. Now it's your turn to give you $2,500. The, the $2,500 that Community Foundation is giving to 25 organizations will be picked ran and randomly. We are hoping that a lot of organizations find a match, get a match, and raise a match. Yeah? Last, um, last year we got a matching grant of $12,000. Yeah? And so we, with the way we framed it was that if we raise $12,000, that it will match up with $12,000. So we didn't raise $12,000. And so it was, we, we were wondering this year if we could frame it a different way, and we've, we've gotten a $10,000 matching grant, and mm -hmm. we Yep, that's a good way of saying it. I mean, it's really up to your donor. But if we don't make the goal, then we can still... You can still take the money, right, right. right. So this is really about the matching donor donor. Like, if they, if you raised $7,500 on a $10,000 grant, or matching grant, then they can choose to give you that $7,500 to match it or not. But really, the, the motivation here is to get other donors to jump on board. So I think that the way you're phrasing it is perfectly accurate. You know, up to $10,000. No, we didn't take the money. We did lose the money, and the donors did give the money, but separately, not on Valley Day, they did give. Yeah. Otherwise. The uh, matching donors don't have to give through the website. As a matter of fact, they shouldn't give through the website. They should give their money offline uh, for several reasons. It's a match, so it doesn't really go through the website. It doesn't count through to your total dollars on Valley Gives Day. It's just sitting there as a place marker for other people to see. Once the day's over, they write you a check. Yeah. Can that $2,500 be a group of five, $500 people who come yeah. together? Yeah, sure. Okay. Yeah. So it doesn't have to be an individual. individual. No, 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 exactly. I mean, I urge you to make sure you have a match before you put it up that you have a match. <laughs> and matter of fact, to be honest with you, what, when you set up a match, and you'll learn this on the matching site, and, uh, is that they ask for the email address of your matching donor because they, they keep them abreast of how much they've made towards that match. So, so five addresses or have a... I have one person that's taking care of it, yeah. The minimum is $2,500. We looked at that number through what we thought the smallest organizations could actually do. Like, if you can find two donors to give $1,250, or you can find three donors to give, you know, $2,000 or $1,000, or whatever it is, I think that it's possible. Yeah. Okay, so this is the results of doing matching gifts. That's why I'm encouraging it. And like I said, we'll go into this more. But last year, we had $150,000 were given through matching gifts. And the year before, it was only 2200 22000 sorry. So 9% of the gifts given were because of the matching gift last year. So that's a pretty powerful number. We're hoping it'll be more like 30 or 40% of the gifts this year. Um, you can also do, this is something new to uh, Razu this year is I made my own page. Uh, I'm not going to be raising money on Valley Gives Day for Community Foundation. It would be a conflict of interest. However, this is an example. Individuals, so say you have a donor who's really involved in your organization. They can create their own donation page. You probably have seen this with like fun runs and people who are, who are, are you know, walking for cancer and those types of things. You can do that for Valley Gives this year. So this will link to your, donation, your organization's page. So a lot of individuals can go out and raise money for your organization on that day. It's another way. So anyways, if you need help, there's all the information you can need. Razu is spelled correctly here. <laughs> <laughs> and I can help you with anything pretty much under the sun. And if I can't, Razu can. There's not a question I haven't had yet. You know, I've had them all, I think. So the capacity building, so training. Training, matter of fact, that slide is about you building your page, you getting online, you making sure you do what you need to do to be there on the day of. That's what this, this is about. 
The next thing, capacity building training. I would say that it doesn't really matter if you're in Valley Gibbs or not. This training is good for you no matter what you're doing. <laughs> Raising money, trying to get your business out there, all of those things. There's a lot of things in this training that you could use. Um, solicitation webinar. How do you ask for money? <coughs> Very basic. That's what we got to do in this business. How do you ask for money? So uh, Mark is probably one of the foremost experts on raising money. He's written tons of books. He's really, really a dynamic human being. You're really going to enjoy that. That's a webinar. Storytelling. Deborah is going to be doing a live training at the Kittredge Center, which is at Mount Holy or at Holyoke Community College. This will teach you how to tell a powerful story. Videotape it. Put it on your Facebook page. Put it on your Twitter page. Put it on your fundraising page. Social media. Heather did our social media webinar last year. Uh, you'll, all of this is on the website. You've, you will get it. You've gotten an invitation. Your organization has. All of this stuff is accessible, OK? So Heather last year did our social media webinar. She taught people how to create a Facebook page, a Twitter page. If you do not have at least those two things, find somebody to build one for you ASAP. Because these trainings are great, but if you don't have a page to build on, then the trainings are useless. So they are very, very important. Our first year, we had 250, 300 likes on our Facebook page from Valley Gives. And we had like, we started out with maybe 300 at the beginning, or 400 at the beginning of last Valley Gives. And by the end, we had 900. And now we have like 1,400 likes. So we've quadrupled <laughs> our exposure, so to speak. Oops. Our Twitter is growing even faster. I think Twitter, you can link them too. So if you post on Facebook, it posts on Twitter. You know, there's lots of technology. Heather will help you with those things in her webinar. And then Kivi LaRue is doing our stewardship program. So stewardship of all of the things, the training, this is the place where you want to take care of your donors. Find out how to follow up with them. Find out what they want to hear. Make sure they stay with you. Make sure they're sustainable. So these two things, traditional media, you should be asking yourself these questions. You should be writing a plan out. How do we want to communicate Valley Gives to our friends and family, our donors, businesses? Again, all these slides will be available to you. Don't, don't worry about reading every single line and writing it down. Um, we also have, when you leave, you'll, there's a checklist, a, like kind of a timeline of what we suggest doing, what has worked very well for organizations. When you leave, make sure you get that. Some of this is on there. And then social media. Do you have a web page, Facebook, Twitter, or Pinterest, and Instagram account? Most important question on that whole page. Do you have a hashtag? Hashtag Valley Gives. Gets sent out there all the time. I don't know how many times Michael knows, but I don't. <laughs> I see it everywhere. You can schedule posts. Very important thing. Everybody thinks they have to sit down and post. Leave the computer, come back next week and post. You don't. You can schedule your posts out. You get a bunch of stories put together. You can schedule them to go out at different times. So at the end of the day, what do we want to accomplish? We want to increase giving for local needs, your organizations. We want to reduce fundraising costs. That's a really important line for small volunteer organizations. Look at it. Raise $1 online cost or raising one dollar online costs seven cents. That's pretty teeny as compared to 20 cents for grant writing for every dollar or a dollar 25 for every dollar. That's the most powerful one. You're sending out letters, you're paying postage, you're writing the letters, you're printing the letters, you're having someone spend four hours on your mailing, five hours on your mailing. I'm sure you all have been there. I have been there. It is uh, I won't say it's a thing of the past, but I will say that it's not a very cost-effective way if you're a small organization particularly. Leverage new giving technology. <clears throat> so 
That's a very powerful statement too. MPOs that use social networking have increased their fundraising by 40%. I know this for a fact. There are organizations that came to Valley Gives Day last year. They, on that day, they got 20% of the people that donated on that day, on average, 20% of the people that donated on that day were new donors. So they increased their database by 20%, which means they increased their donations by 20%. That was on average. We had some organizations that had 50% of the donors on that day. Some, you know, some organizations had 10%. It doesn't matter. It will increase your donor database. Enhance the culture of generosity. In the end, we're trying to build something in this valley, which is, you know, even if you have a little, you can still give. And I think that Valley of Gibbs has been a very successful program in doing that. Um, I know that working as the program manager, working as the outreach person last year for the nonprofits, I know the transformation that it had on organizations to get out there and let people know they were there. Just by showing up on Valley Gives Day, you are with hundreds of other organizations and someone may give to you know, one organization and go, huh, I didn't know that that organization was also an educational organization. I'm gonna give to them too. It might be $10, it might be $100, it might be $1,000. There are people out there who love to sit down <laughs> and give their money away and they do it because they do it on this day because it really works for them. It works for them to see who's out there and who they can give to. So thank you guys for coming today. We have a little bit of time before the next session starts. If you want to come ask me questions, you can. Uh, and yeah, good luck. I'm so happy to see all of you. Thank you.